Good to see you again, Inquisitor. Allow me to introduce Professor Bram Kenrick. He's the reason we're out here. A pleasure to meet you, Your Worship. Professor Kenrick teaches at the University of Orlais. I came on an exchange program from Starkhaven. While in Val Royo, I found something incredible. After 800 years, we may be able to determine the final resting place of the last Inquisitor. It's not that I'm not excited about this, but why are we excited about this? Hear me out, Your Worship. This find will have value both historical and practical. Inquisitor Emeridan stepped down shortly before the Navarran Accord brought the Seekers of Truth into the Chantry. He hunted demons, dragons, and dangerous apostates in a time before Templars even existed. I'm all for history if it means tracking down the equipment of a famous demon hunter. How can we help you find Inquisitor Emeridan's resting place? Your scouts have gathered artifacts from the area. They may help us discover what Inquisitor Emeridan was doing. I have news as well. We've encountered hostile Avar to the north. They call themselves the Jaws of Hakon. There's also an Avar hold to the east. Unlike the Jaws of Hakon, they've been friendly so far. The Jaws of Hakon? They're hostile Avar who attack any Inquisition agents or researchers who get close. We've sent soldiers for defense, but the Hakonites are cunning, merciless, and know the basin better than we do. I'm afraid our men will not be able to hold out long. How do you like the Frostback Basin? It's lovely, isn't it? At least until you step in a pile of bogfish or poo. The stuff's vile. It makes great fuel for starting fires, though, if you can tolerate the smell. Ugh. I might suggest that to the commander. It could be great for sieges. The commander would never go for it. He's too dignified. You mean uptight? Sorry. Don't tell him I said that. What do you think about the Avar? When I was a little girl, a lady in our village used to tell me Avar tales. Being able to see their lives up close, it's nothing like I thought. They're very tall, aren't they? I was considering a proposal for Commander Cullen. Avar allies with dwarven archers astride their shoulders. They'd be unstoppable. They say you grew up in a village. Where did you learn how to fight? Draw a bow? All that? Here and there. You pick things up as a little dwarf girl in a village filled with piggish Ferelden boys. I'm no artist with a blade. I just know what hurts, and what takes them down quick. Bruised a shin or two in my day, and a few... You know, other things. <laughs> and archery? Oh, there was a traveling hunter who set me up with my first bow and taught me the basics. After that, I practiced on my own. <laughs> On squirrels, mostly. Oh, and Heinrich from next door, but only with padded arrows. I hear you have family in Ferelden. Yes, my mother and father. I insisted they move to Denerim once I signed up with the Inquisition. Ambassador Montillier tells me I should invite them to Skyhold. She thinks they'd be proud of me. But after Haven, I, I just can't, you know? It's not that I don't trust you or our soldiers, it's just... I just want them to be safe. And if that means they don't get to see things firsthand, that's okay. My mother likes writing letters anyway. What are your thoughts about our progress against Corypheus? We're getting close. It feels like we're on the right track, doesn't it? Everyone working together against our common goal. It feels good. Have you spoken to Kenrick much? A bit. He's quite nice, isn't he? And clever, really loves his books. I said hello one day while he had his nose buried in a giant tome. His shriek was a winner. I can't stop doing it now. <laughs> it's too funny. We'll continue this another time. Safe travels. Lady Har <clears throat> I mean, Scout Harding has an impressive team. Her people brought back a number of artifacts. If you need something tracked, Scout Harding is your woman. If only it were that easy. After 800 years, we can't just look for tracks. Barring enchantment, cloth and leather will have long since rotted away. Only metal and stone remain recognizable. 
Complicating this are recent pieces the Avar left behind, and, of course, ancient pieces dating back to Tevinter. Fortunately, thanks to some period-specific buckling, I've been able to track our last Inquisitor. You lost me at buckling. You'd think that a buckle was a buckle. But ever since people started belting on weapons, they've been adding bits. One piece here has a dragon engraving. With the alloys of the metals used, it's clearly Tevinter. While this one uses a clasp that wasn't invented until the dawn of the Olesian Empire. And when it comes to historical research, you might say we have to buckle down. <laughs> You said there were pieces dating back to Tevinta. Yes. While it's rare to see Tevinta ruins so far south, the Imperium once had an outpost of some sort here. They might have built it as a, a ritual site. I'm not sure what military value it could have. In any event, it's muddled up the research slightly, but I've accounted for it. What do you have, Professor? Everything so far points to the shore, not far to the south. There was some sort of battle near the shoreline. They were in a hurry. The scouts reported an island near an Avar fishing camp, but the Avar won't say much about it. What makes you think the last Inquisitor was fighting? There's a clasp here common to armor links. It's clearly torn. That only happens from a heavy shearing blow, like large claws or an axe. Then there's the dagger. Silverite with a stylized dragon pommel and an inscription reading Cordillus. That dagger had to be a gift from Cordillus Dracon, first emperor of Orlais. No one would just <laughs> lose such a thing. What can you tell me about the Avar fishing camp? Not much. It's the friendly Avar, not these jaws of Hakon barbarians. According to the scouts, they wouldn't say much about the area. Likely a local superstition. I'll find a way to that island and see if there's anything useful there. Excellent. I'll continue to study what's been found. With luck, we'll both find some answers. Also, one of my research assistants, Colette, was investigating an old structure to the north. I'm not certain it's related to our investigation, but it couldn't hurt to check with her. Inquisition soldiers. We should help them. Lieutenant Farrow, sir. We've beaten back those Hakonite bastards. My men and I will hold here. The Hakonites along the river still pose a threat. After this last battle, we need time to fortify and regroup. What's the situation along the river? Between the Hakonites and the wildlife, this isn't the easiest place to maintain a presence. The river's the best way for the Inquisition to send supplies from Skyhold. Or it would be if we could travel safely along it. The Hakonites set up camps near the banks, and they attack anyone who gets within view. That will be all, Lieutenant. Sir? What is this? Are the fishes of stone, Bearhole, too rude to share a meal with friends? Can the jaws of Hakon not catch their own fish? Or are those jaws only good for flapping? Mind your tongue, Bogwalker. Stone Bearhold may not always shelter you. And you will need shelter when the cold winds come. Yet I feel only hot air. The Inquisitor! Let her blood bathe the blades of the jaws of Hakon! Death to the Lowlanders! Glory to Hakon! Lowlander the call Inquisitor. I am Arvid Rolfson. Well fought. The fish will feed on fool's heart wine this night. I know not what brings you here, but we have no quarrel, you and I. How long have you lived in the basin? 
Stone Bear Hold's been here a few generations. I was born further north, but we left before I could remember. It was a good life, until the jaws of Hacken arrived. They brought trouble with them. People are expecting a raid, but... Yeah. You don't agree? They seem bigger fools than that, for all their boasting. I cannot say what they plan, but it bodes ill. I find myself in need of a boat. I need to reach that island. The Lady's Rest. What? That island belongs to the Lady of the Skies. The spirits warn us to leave it be. Warn the spirits right back. We're Inquisition. I don't wish to disturb your lady, but it's important. If I give you the boat, and you anger the spirits and die, other lowlanders may come for blood. That is trouble for my hold, and not my trouble to take. Go to Stone Bear Hold and speak with my thane, Svara Sunair. Get her blessing, and you may sail to Korth's rocky heart, if you wish. Have you seen the animals the jaws of Hakon keep? Rat things with frost dripping from their claws. What is that commotion? Almost there, pal! Move your legs, Tats! He climbs like a fish! Shut your yap! This is not my hold, Lowlander. I will not shed your blood here. You will face the full might of the jaws of Hakon soon enough. We've heard of your arrival, Lowlanders. Come, share my fire where we might speak. I am Svara Sunhair, Thane of Stone Bear Hold. You have guest welcome here. The Lowlanders have little love for their mages. I am impressed that you came to lead this Inquisition. You and your people have come far from the safety of the Lowlands. We have not come to cause trouble in your home, Thane. We have learned that the last Inquisitor may have died here hundreds of years ago. We seek his body. Giving peace to the dead is a worthy quest. Any help we can offer is yours. Sadly, the Jaws of Hakon will not offer so warm a welcome. You have met their thane, Gerd Harrifson. I wager you have crossed blades with the Jaws of Hakon in the wilderness. If you would search this place for your Inquisitor's body, they will want you to pay in blood. When I first entered your hold, there was a climbing contest of some sort. What was that? The test of the lady. We use it to settle disputes when it is not clear who has the right of it. There are others. For the test of the Mountain Father, you battle with verse while those who favor you hold you aloft. The test of Hakon is battle with blunted weapons. Those tests only prove who is faster or stronger, not who is right. Are your lowland trials perfect? Can the wealthy or quick-witted not succeed even when their claim is weak? As Thane, I may guide the gods in finding who is worthy. I decide which test will settle the dispute. I may also ask a warrior whose claim is foolish to climb with stones strapped to his back. I'd like to hear more about Stone Bear Hold. We are not the largest hold, but our warriors are strong and our singers are pretty. Ah, oh, words are for boasting around the fireside. You should look yourself, if you will. I'd like to know more about the Jaws of Hakon. They are not the first hold to take that name. All have been foolish. What would you know of them? What do the Jaws of Hakon believe that makes them so angry? A wise man honors each god to its strength. Bjorn Reedbeard for fishing, Rilla of the Fireside for making babies. The Hakonites care only for Hakon Winter's Breath, god of war and winter. There is no evil in Hakon. There are times to fight, but the jaws of Hakon care for nothing else. They raid, they fight. Eventually they die and their stories are forgotten. It is the way of things. What can you tell me of the people now calling themselves the jaws of Hakon? They came here a few years ago, after the Blight took their hold. There was land enough for both, so we were friendly. 
We did not see their anger. Gerd Harrifson lost too many in his hold to Darkspawn. He thought only of battle and war. To avenge a wrong is a good thing, but only a fool lights the world on fire to do it. You said that there were earlier groups known as the Jaws of Hakon. Yes. Many ages ago. They thought of nothing but slaughter glory. They attacked the Lowlanders. Your people fought back and destroyed them. They were fools. The Hakonites are attacking my people. I would welcome any assistance you could offer. Bathing my blade in the blood of the Hakonites would be cause for a feast for most in this hold. The Hakonites are fools, and they have forgotten the old ways. But we have pledged peace with them. To attack with Lowlanders at our side would make us Oathbreakers. This is poor weather for me to ask that of my hold. I'm not hearing a no, Thane Sunher. Among the Avar, a hold draws strength from its hold beast. They are as kin to us. When our hold beast is strong and happy, there is joy. When it sickens and dies, it is an ill omen. Our bear, Storvaker, has not been seen in days. The Hold fears for her. I cannot ask the Hold to break peace oaths unless Storvaker returns. The way you asked us to help find Storvaker made it sound like you were willing to break your oath. I could say that Avar hold all oaths sacred, that no true Avar would break them. It would be a good lie. Lowlanders doubtless say the same of themselves. A cunning Thane can find a hole in the tent of any promise. A place for the cold wind to sneak in. We are bone and blood. Oaths last until they are broken. If I find your bear and you break the oath, what happens to Stone Bear Hold? Other holds share oaths with the Jaws of Hakon. They are sworn to defend or avenge them. If the Hakonites were friends, they would attack us. But they are friends to few. We will send offerings, trade, and gifts to pay the price of oath-breaking. The storm will pass. I do not do this lightly, Inquisitor, but the Hakonites are tiresome. I'm a little confused about why I have to find a bear in order to gain the support of your tribe. Storvaker is not a bear. She is our hold beast. She ties us to the gods. Without her, we... Your Maker has turned from you, has he not? It is as that. I know more of this world than the world of spirits. Speak with our Augur if you would know more. They're our gods, not yours. For you, it is enough that Storvaka matters to us. Maybe I shouldn't bring this up, but bears and I traditionally do not get along. You were fought bears. <laughs> you lived. Good for you. Fear will keep you respectful, should you find Storvaka. You will be fine. So, you're saying she's friendly? Um... Does Storvaka usually live in the hold? Does she stay in a pen, or...? <sighs> Pens are for goats and chickens, not hold kin. The Avar are free. So must be our hold beasts. Storvaka lives in a cave near the hold. She comes to visit if she wishes to see us. We bring her gifts of food. Not enough that she will not hunt for herself. Do you have any members of the Hold searching for Storvaka? The Hold is already fearful. A great hunt for our Hold beast would show weakness to the Hakonites. If she were dead, the Augur would know. So the hunters watch for tracks. That is all we can do. I was told I needed your permission to borrow a boat from the fishermen. Bah, Rolfson. He worries like a scared baby goat. The boat is yours. Tell him I said so. I will speak with you later. Ask those in the hold about Storvaka. They may know something they have not told me. So, she arrives. Don't throng! Behold, worthy ones. The woman who blazes like fire and mends the air. Not good. What is this? It's safe. They mean no harm. I am the Ogre of Stone Bear Hold. I greet you, as do our gods and the gods of our ancestors. There. 
It is done. Now come, be welcome. At her news of the North. Did you just introduce me to spirits? The gods of the hold clamored to see you. I obeyed. For I'm their voice and their augur. And if I didn't show you off, they'd hound me for months. What did you mean when you said I blaze like a fire? How do you think you appear to the gods of the Fade? To those beyond the Veil, your hand burns like the Watchman's bonfire. If I could get rid of this anchor, I would. You'd shun a favor from the gods? They tell me strange things. That you mudded time's waters where the cliffs are red, and returned again. I'd like to ask something. Then ask. I assume Augur is another word for mage. I am a mage. Yet not all mages are Augurs. I give counsel to other mages, and the same. In turn, an Augur takes counsel from the gods and shares it with the Hold. I make their will known to us, and ours to them. So you're an ambassador to the local spirits? Some have wisdom. For those willing to listen. They protect the hold. They help drive off spirits who've gone bad with rage or gloom. The gods live with us. Ignore their offerings, offer them nothing, and it weakens us all. I've heard enough to realize that when you say gods, you mean spirits. Why do you pray to them? We offer to them. We don't pray like the lowlanders to a creator they think will weather all the ages. Do you actually think they're divine beings? Something more than magic? The spirits watched us even before we came from the North. They shaped themselves into our gods, and we grew to love them. Their secret gift is this, Inquisitor. They reflect us as water does the sky. They show us what we wish to be. That image gives us strength. For that, we thank the gods. I should be off. Farewell. Over there. We must do something. Inquisitor. Still finding it difficult to breathe, but I'm not strewn across the landscape, so thank you. I'm Colette, Professor Kenrick's research assistant. I was hoping to conduct a survey of a Tavinta ruin in the hills. I may not have chosen the best route. You're Kenrick's research assistant, so that makes you a student at the University of Orlais. It does? Why? If I've said something wrong, I'm sorry. That's usually asked with skepticism. The university accepts those worthy of admission, though elven students are few. How do you find it there? It's not easy, but this is what I want, and I like working for Professor Kenrick. Elven research students, where publications concerned, their works often deemed not substantial enough for formal credit. But Kenrick cares about people who want to learn, if our research finds an audience, I know my name will be included. What were you hoping to find at the ruin? The Tevinter's time here was brief, but their architecture endured, offering shelter, forming landmarks. Ancient Avar would have encountered these structures, which certainly predate Inquisitor Emeridan. Evaluating the ruins could offer insight into the region's history, once I can get set up. You're still going there? I've read everything we have on Ameridan, and studied up on new excavation techniques. I won't waste this opportunity. If you've a map, I can show you my destination. If you'd be interested in the findings... Stay safe. I will. Clearly a fight here. Something big. Like... Bear big. Maybe a bear. No bits. No blood. No way to cart something out. It has to be close.
wonders are free to sacrifice. Jaws of Agon, destroy them! You die! Goat-kissing, blood-drinking, hackanite chicken craps! Thank you, Inquisitor. Storvacker has returned. My hunters saw what you and she did to the Hakonites who held her. In trapping Storvacker, the jaws of Hakon broke their peace oath with Stonebear Hold. Our blades are yours. I assume your bear is all right after whatever they were going to do to her. She is fine. As for what they were going to do, my hunters brought items back from where they held Storvacker. I know what they intended. It is not something you will like. Something few Avar would tell Lowlanders. But you must hear it. The jaws of Hakon sought to bind their god in mortal form and bring war to the Lowlands. A god's god? Yes. Hakon Winter's Breath. Bringer of the cold winds of war. How do you send a god to attack someone? With much blood and many foolish rituals. Though you have given them pause, they will try again. Ages ago, the old jaws of Hakon did the same. They brought their god to life to destroy the lowlands. Their foolishness lost Hakon to all Avar. Now they would free him and begin again. What would happen if the jaws of Hakon succeeded in their plan? Hakon would come to the lowlands in the form of a great beast. The Hakonites would join him, their numbers swelled by foolish young warriors dreaming of honor names. Even if war were needed, it should not be like that, with gods wreaking havoc in blood-soaked fields. The gods should stay where they belong. The Avar wouldn't like the idea of war with the lowlands. Is that what your skulls say? <laughs> it does us no harm to be feared. If our land is threatened, we will happily fight. And a raid here and there keeps both sides sharp. But we have no need of your lowlands. Not when our goats are fat and our fish are plenty. And not when the sky is torn with demons. Only a fool fights in a burning boat. What did you mean when you said that their foolishness lost Hakon to all Avar? When they bound Hakon to mortal form, he became blood of this world. He could hear no prayers, nor speak to the augurs. All he could do was kill. Then he vanished instead of dying, as though rendered mute, lost for ages. If they sought to free him from mortal form, I could understand. Making him attack the lowlands is a fool's work. Based on what we know, what must we do to stop the jaws of Hakon? Their hold is an old lowlander fortress. It is shielded by a great wall of ice. Magic even the Hakonites do not know. Unravel its magic, and we will scatter their bones so the lady never finds them. I will speak with you later. Fair hunting. Yeah? Thane Sunhair gave me guest welcome at Stonebear Hold. Aye, she sent word. As a guest, then, may I please borrow your boat? We will be poor hosts to refuse. The boat is yours. I hope you come back alive. Good, fine work. I hate this island. It stinks of dog and blight and just sad. How does it smell sad? The spirits gathered here were drawn to tragedy. They radiated, as fire does heat. Make them stop. It's my head, demons. You're not invited. This rift is ancient. It may have formed from the battle that took place here, not the breach. Hello. 
Liana slept. I slept. To find him in dreaming. But I... The blood. I'm... She's gone. Talana wanted to reach Ameridan again. One more time. But she couldn't. I couldn't. I died. I tried to stay, but only pieces came through. You opened the sky for the rest of me. Solas, this seems like something you might be able to help with. Pain drew the wraiths. But this spirit touched the mind of someone who cared for Inquisitor Ameridan. Ameridan? Yes. Inquisitor. Beloved. I... She... Came with a Meriden to hunt the dragon. The dragon? Huge. Power like none had seen. It came from the mountains with the Ava. Towns fell. All dead. One last favor for Emperor Draken. Slay the Ava dragon. Save or lay. This wasn't just a hunt. Inquisitor Emeridan was here on orders from Emperor Draken. Yes. A, a secret. Drawn by the dragon. Talana. I didn't want to, but, but where Emeridan goes, I go. They fought at the shore. Spirits and magic. Cold. So cold. How I found her. How she found us. They rested here, then up the river, metal spires, a way to stop the dragon. Then Talana returned here, alone, to wait for him. Forever waiting, dreaming, then dead. We'll find a Meriden. You don't have to wait here anymore. You have done all she asked of you. Be free. Thank you. It was hard. I... She... Went a long time ago. I stayed because she asked. Her things are there. She wanted them found. A spirit on the island held the memories and possessions of Emeridan's lover, a woman named Talana. It told us that Emeridan was here on orders from Emperor Draken himself, and where he went next. Andraste's dimples. I may have received tenure from that sentence alone. Emeridan had a lover. Talana, you said. The Inquisitor's Lady Mage. There was such debate over whether she existed. And there were orders? This was a request from Draken? This changes everything. You don't have a problem receiving information from spirits. It's not ideal, but since you found corroborating physical evidence, I see no serious issues. Any study of great wars and battlefields carries an inherent risk of contact with demons or spirits. When spirits are willing to talk, most historians love the chance of a first-hand report. What does it change knowing that Emeridan was on a mission from Emperor Draken? Everything. One current theory holds that Emeridan was selfishly throwing off his responsibilities to go hunting. Another suggests Draken had him removed or even killed because Emeridan opposed the Navaran Accord. But if this is true, then Emeridan was a loyal servant of Orlay. He was not an embarrassment. He was a patriot protecting Orle while Draken fought in the Second Blight. You were surprised to hear that Emeridan had a lover. Yes. This Talana you mentioned. Her existence has been hotly debated. Some scholars took Inquisitor Emeridan's respect for the Chantry to imply that he remained celibate. In ages past, there were stories about him and his lover, a mage. 
They made it out to be a star-crossed romance. The Chantry silenced the stories strenuously. When I helped the Avar at Stonebear Hold, we learned that the Jaws of Hakon once bound their god's soul to a beast. According to the spirit, the dragon Ameridan faced was powerful and accompanied by hostile Avar. You believe they could be one and the same? That would mean... Of course! Of course! Brilliant! 800 years ago, the second blight threatened a weak Orle. A perfect time for the Avar to attack. This Avar god dragon could have endangered the Olesian Empire had Ameridan not stopped it. That explains why he would accept such a dangerous mission. And likely how he died. You're not concerned about the literal existence of an Avar god? Not particularly. If the Jaws of Hakon once bound their god to a dragon, it is likely just a powerful spirit. That isn't to downplay the important cultural significance to the Avar, but magic does not equate godhood. Every blight comes from the old gods, which are also dragons corrupted by some outside influence. Sometimes I wonder if we really know what we mean by gods. How bad would it be if the contemporary Jaws of Hakon bound their god to a dragon again? With Orlay still recovering from the Civil War and the Mage Templar conflict, not to mention the remaining demon rifts and Corypheus himself, a high dragon given malice and magic by an Avar god spirit could hypothetically destroy much of Orlay. At least, I hope that was hypothetically. History forgot about an attack by a giant magic dragon. If you want something done right. The spirit said to follow the river to the north, and something about spires or spikes. Hmm. Up the river, um... The scouts have had trouble with Hakonites up there. I'll continue my research, but for now, your guess is as good as mine. What do you need me to do next, Professor? That spirit on the island said something about a Meriden going upriver to, um... Some place with, with spires? While you search upriver, I'll continue studying these buckles. That, um, sounded better in my head. I'll speak with you later. So, river, metal, just like the friendly spirit said. Great. The jaws of Hakon must be guarding this place for a reason. This is brilliant. This must be what the spirit meant. Excellent find. From what I can see, this is an ancillary station. Likely a scouting post for the larger structure to the east. What can it tell us about where Inquisitor Ameridan went? Hmm.
This is Elven. I believe it's the word for light. It's some sort of clue to this barrier. Not sure how. Indeed. That's something you don't see every day. A pair of shrines. This one is clearly Andrastian, albeit from a very early period, likely pre divine. But this is Elven, one of their gods. Uh, what was it? Every mother finds Druffalo among sleeping juniper groves. G something. The one with the deer. What was that? Every mother finds Druffalo. Oh, it's uh, a memory aid to help me with the names of the elven gods. Every is Elgernan. Mother is Mithal. Finds is Fallow something. <sighs> I was more focused on early Chantry history. I didn't really do elves. Are you sure that your memory aid caught all the elven gods? Well, there's only one F for Falondine. Oh, I suppose I forgot Feneral. Most people do. This isn't him, though. It's, uh, it's one of the ladies, ah, uh, obviously. G something. That would be Gilanon, mother of the Hala. Yes! Brilliant, thank you. Oh, that would have bothered me all day. Two shrines for two lovers. Inquisitor Emeridan and Talana. Maybe Talana was an elf. Oh, yes. That's good. The Chantry expunged references to elves before the exalted march on the Dales. They erased the canticle of Shartan. They must have done the same to Talana. The Chantry should not rewrite history to cover up inconvenient truths. Agreed. The Chant of Light should spread the truth. Not suppress it. Regardless, the important thing is what this tells us. It's not a burial site. That much is obvious. Look at those flowers. They're not native to the area. What if they were left at the shrine as an offering? Yes. A night of prayer before battle against the dragon. But then where? Where? We're missing something. What are we missing? Oh, where did you go? Professor, look at this. Shartan 10-7 and Transfigurations 10-1. Shartan is dissonant. And before them, empty, outstretched, lay the land which led to the gates of Minrathus. And Transfigurations is, the light shall lead her safely through the paths of this world. Why these verses? Why would Inquisitor Ameridan take the time to carve this before going into battle? Gates of Minrathus. Isn't there a Tavinta fortress in the area? Yes. Oh, of course. The ritual site. To seal the dragon away, a Meriden's elven mage must have used a spell at a site of great power. My scouts have checked the fortress. It's sealed behind a wall of ice. It has to be magic. Let's look around. A Meriden found a way through that ice, so that way should be nearby. abandoned this fortress, they left the Wall of Ice to, uh, to lock the door behind them? And every lock has a key. 
Like these trail markers. Ameridan must have known how to use them. If they can melt through the ice, that must be where Ameridan sealed away the dragon. I'll follow the markers and see what we can find. Are we certain these trail markers will burn through this wall of ice around the fortress? Given that the trail markers retain enough energy to illuminate one another, I see no reason to worry. No ice, still a wall. What about that? This must be where Kenrick's assistant came to study. Inquisitor, you may want to see this. Inquisitor, I was going to send word. I found something. This inscription, almost completely faded, but two stood. Felt sixty true before our triumph. A breath in the hunt, and let rest the lowlanders, worthy of the lady's care. The markings and surrounding artifacts date to Ameridan's time. The references and scripts suggest Avar. What's your theory? I need to complete a full survey and have Professor Kenrick evaluate the site himself. But this may be a tribute to Heron and Orina, Inquisitor Ameridan's companions. What makes you think the inscription refers to Heron and Orina? It's only a theory, but the age of the markings and surrounding artifacts match the timeline we've established for Ameridan. I found glass fragments in the clay. Several with slight veins of discoloration. Blue. Like Templar artifacts. Templars? The Templars were a new order in Ameridan's time. Given their small numbers then, few would be found outside the Chantry's reach. It's unusual to find one deep in uncharted territory, unless he traveled here for a purpose, as Heron would have. You don't think the inscription could refer to Ameridan himself? It's possible, but Emeridan would have been recognized as a leader, which the inscription might have noted out of respect. And a breath in the hunt? Why note that your hunt continues unless your remaining prey was someone important? What happened here? An encounter with ancient Avar, and not a friendly one. Emeridan and his companions were outnumbered in an unfamiliar place. If Emeridan's not here, Perhaps someone bought him the time needed to keep going? If this is the resting place of Heron and Dorina, it only remains because the Avar took time to honor them. Respect for a worthy adversary? It wouldn't be out of place. What do you know about Heron? When the Templar Order was first formed, Sir Heron was among its members. He's arguably the most famous of the original Templars, though he was never one of their leaders. He's better known as one of Inquisitor Ameridan's confidants. They'd known each other since youth. So they were close. Friends. When Ameridan was made Inquisitor, Heron's position in his inner circle was assumed. A few ballads about them survive. The type with adventures and happy endings. <laughs> I don't know if they're true. They remind me of my brothers, though. What can you tell me about Orina? Orina was an alchemist in Orzammar. It's said she met Ameridan while dealing with a demon, but it's not known why Ameridan was there. Demons aren't common in the deep roads, but they were a problem for the Inquisition at the time. Orina knew she could help, so she joined Ameridan. If she left Orzammar, that would make her a surfacer. She turned her back on the stone, though it's said she had few regrets. Some claim she was actually from one of Orzammar's noble families, but who can say? She never used her last name on the surface, and once exiled, the family likely struck her name from personal documents. Professor Kenrick petitioned Orzammar's Shaperit to grant access to their records, but the request was turned down. What will you do with this information? 
Professor Kenrick will expect detailed notes on the location, stone and clay samples, and any trace artifacts I can find. If Ameridan's history is compiled, this could be worth an entire chapter. I might get credit on the inside cover. Thank you, Colette. Inquisitor. Your Skald and your Scout are here. We can plan the assault. Oh, I like the sound of Skald. It's more dramatic than Professor. <coughs> <coughs> yes, well, uh, everything we've found out about Inquisitor Emeridan suggests that he never emerged from that Tevinter fortress. If that is where your Inquisitor defeated Hakon, that is where the Jaws of Hakon must perform the right to free him. Ideally, we stop them before that. I'd rather not fight an Aval God if we don't have to. You really have no problem with us killing your god? Gods cannot be reborn until they die. Hakon needs a good rebirthing. If you say so. With its ice wall melted, the fortress is open to attack. We must strike soon, before our foes recover. They're already trying. I've got most of our forces defending the shrine from Hakonites who want to restore the wall. If anyone has suggestions, now is the time. What gives you fear, Inquisitor? Is this not the battle you wanted? I'm no warrior, but with Lady Harding's forces defending the shrine and no way to breach the walls... <laughs> Lowlanders. Why not climb the walls? Your warriors can get over those walls before the Hakonites stop them? This is not a war, Stone Daughter. This is a raid. We strike at night, clad lightly. We climb the wall and open the gate from inside. If Stonebear Holds can open the gates, we would be grateful. The jaws of Hakon have been bugs in my bedroll for months, Inquisitor. We owe you thanks. Inquisition forces will feign weakness near the shrine. That'll draw some of them away from the fortress. Not too many, I hope. Yes, save some for us. Ask and I will climb over. I'll be there to catch Parv when he slips. Of course you will. You'll be behind me after all. Where the guard? I've got him. There! It's the Wallanders! Kill the Inquisitor! Death to her hold for Hakon's glory! Eat them, not us! Got it? Beware the wards. They will sap your strength. The 
cold is magical. It will kill us if we do not hurry. Better, right? Might even keep our toes. Sing the song. Winter's breath to rack the moment, cold to cut and kill the hated. We must hurry. The ritual to free the spirit of Hakon is underway. until the ritual is disrupted. Winter's breath to rack the moment, cold to cut and kill the hate. Inquisitor, your predecessor could not stand against me. You shall fall as well. I am the cold bite of winter. the fires. I am Hakon Reborn! The cold is worse near the creature. Inquisitor. Inquisitor? How fares Draken? Has he brought the chant to the whole world yet? Inquisitor Emeridan, you disappeared in 120 Divine, around the time of the signing of the Navaran Accord. You say it as though it was... How long? You were the last Inquisitor. There has not been another since you disappeared 800 years ago. Draken was my oldest friend. He would have sent someone to find me. He never had the chance. The dark spawn that rose in the Anderfells threatened all of Orlé. I see. Talana escaped the battle. Did she... Do the records say what became of her? She returned to the island. From what we can tell, she died trying to reach you through dreams. I asked her not to. She was a good hunter and the love of my life, but she never... 
I never wanted this job. Hunting demons was so much simpler than politics. Inquisitor Ameridan, how could the leader of the Seekers be a mage? Has history forgotten so much? I was not a Seeker myself, as most Inquisitors were. I used my magical gifts in the hunting of demons at Maleficarum. Do the Seekers no longer welcome the aid of mages? No, that was forgotten. Among many other things. Cassandra is a Seeker. And after the Seekers went rogue, she discovered the truth about them. We learned they developed the right of tranquility. You mean sundering one from the Fade? The Seekers do it briefly when granting an initiate their abilities. It has become a way to control mages deemed dangerous. They are left tranquil, permanently. <sighs> Killing a man is ugly work. You learn not to look to it as your first recourse. Sundering them from the Fade is... easy. Bloodless. I told them spreading such a solution would lead to abuse. They swore that would never happen. They promised. I am so sorry. You could not have known. The Inquisition was a vital force, but feared. We fought so many dangers with so many terrible weapons. I did everything I could to transform them into a force for peace. I had no wish to chase a dragon to the far reaches of nowhere. I had my people to deal with, and the Navaran Accord. But Draken told me I was needed. As I suspect you were needed. I wasn't Inquisitor by choice, whatever my life was before. Take moments of happiness where you find them. The world will take the rest. The dragon carries the spirit of an Avar god. I lacked the strength to kill it. My own magic was able to bind us all, locked in time. But when the cultists drew that spirit into another vessel, it disrupted my bindings. It is breaking free. You won't be fighting it alone this time. No. You will. The passage of years can be delayed, but not ignored. I will soon join Talana at Andraste's side. Take this. It holds the last few memories of an old hunter who was neither as wise nor as strong as he thought. Fight well, Inquisitor. I am honored to have met you. We need to stop the dragon. It still carries the spirit of Hakon. Ever knew. Their heroism was lost to history. People, people, don't do things so you know them. Good on him. I prepare now for my final battle against the dragon of the Avar. All is in place. I offer thanks to Gilanan, Hala Mother, and to Andraste, Maker Bride. As you were raised up from mortal men to stand with our creators, our makers, so raise me up now to defend this world. Oh, he's one of those. Elfie elves don't like that these days. Or anything. 
It is a rare mind that has room to honor both beliefs equally. I must go to the end of Thetis itself for Draken. I am at least glad to have friends on my side. Kalana and Heron have been arguing about Heron using the Lyrium to fight demons. Some things never change. Arena has a new alchemical trick she wants to try, like pitch or tar, but stronger. A recipe straight from Orzammar. They argue, fuss, and mock each other mercilessly. And I would be lost without them. The more things change. A dwarf getting on someone's nerves. I can't imagine. Different in spitting, but still trying. Learn those lessons now, people. are said to be sensitive to demons. A creature like Hakon would have caused Telana terrible pain. It hurt the Inquisitor too. You can tell because he took so long to say she died. He died here, and the elves ignored the second blight as it spread across Ole. So began the animosity that led to the destruction of the Dales. Pride cookies. Friggin' again. Inquisitor, I understand you located the final resting place of Inquisitor Emeridan. I was able to speak with the Inquisitor briefly before he died. I'm sorry? A ritual kept Inquisitor Emeridan alive all these centuries, binding him and the dragon. Oh. Did his... Uh, Talana cast some sort of spell before retreating? Or... You... You're not implying that Emeridan was a... mage. I'm committed to the truth, but if... such an important figure in Chantry history were revealed to have been a mage... Not just a mage, Kenrick. An elven mage. Oh. Oh, and trust his pimples. This... This will be... I'll either be famous or beheaded. This upends centuries of history, not to mention families claiming descent from him. There may be... consternation. Nevertheless, what matters is the truth. If he was elven, then the Dalish... Well, it will be... Just brilliant! I will spread the word appropriately. Thank you again for this marvelous opportunity. Oh, here.
Here you are. I was just going to look for you. I have something for you. I saw it and thought that would be perfect for our Inquisitor. Oh, pants. There's a bit of dried blood on the back. Sorry. Why is there blood on my presents? Well, you know how it is when you slice open a gurgit. I was so sure I got most of the viscera off. Wait, you pulled this out of a dead animal. Oh, Maker, when you put it that way. Oh, well, that was thoughtful of you. I shouldn't keep you. Have a great day, Inquisitor. That was a good fight. The jaws of Hakon are broken and holdless. Their stragglers yet wander the woods. But their foolish plan died with Gerd Harrison. All that remains is the dragon. It has not yet attacked the lowlands. Without the Hakonites to pull it to purpose, it is confused. Still, I would strike soon. I will speak with you later. Walk with the lady's blessing. I am the breath of winter, the cold wind of war. Join me in battle and die! yourself in battle. Fight well! A worthy battle! to see you take down a dragon in person. I must say, it's fun to see it up close. I appreciate the assistance. My pleasure. Inquisitor Meriden would have been proud that you finished what he started. It's strange. History forgot so much of who he was. They never knew he died saving everyone. Do you ever feel that way? You weren't in the fortress. How'd you hear about a Meriden? I'm a scout, remember? Who do you think writes the messages Liliana reads? There are things they don't understand. Things no one outside the Inquisition will ever know. Some of the secrets are necessary. Don't get me wrong. It's just... Every time you're more than just a person to someone, you're also less 
than a person to them. They don't see that a real normal woman fought the Avar and killed that dragon. And they certainly don't know about your strange fixation with Elfroot. My feelings for Elfroot are classified, Scout Harding. <laughs> I'll carry your secret to my pyre. For what it's worth, nice work, Trevelyan. Anyway, I'll be at camp if there's anything here you want to finish up. Otherwise, see you at Skyhold. Inquisitor, you have done more for us than most who are of Stone Bear Hold. It is not right that a guest do so much. The Hold has spoken, and you are no guest. You are kin. More than that, your deeds have earned a legend mark worthy of one who broke the jaws of Hakon. From today, you are known to us as Inquisitor First Thor. What? I mean, I'm sorry, that's... but... First Thor? Yes. When the ice breaks and new spring comes to give life to the world, it is a very good name. I will speak with you later. Fair hunting. I hear you judge wrongs among your people, Inquisitor. If you are willing, I ask you to judge Storvaka. I'm sorry. As a warrior of our hold, Storvaka should have died rather than submit to the vile ritual the jaws of Hakon had prepared. It is unclear whether the Augur or I should judge such a thing. You are here. I would be grateful. I suppose I could render judgment, if it helps the hold. Ah, oh, Storvaka, will you speak to the hold for your deeds? As honorary member of the hold, I believe a hold beast can travel with my people and still keep her oaths. Storvaka, as Inquisitor First Thor, your punishment will be to serve my Inquisition. Lady, the Master of the Hunt will make mockery of me for this. <laughs> 